Hey everybody, Sled Driver 1 back here again. And today I'm going to go over the engine, transmission, box drive line. It's kind of the whole powertrain stuff of the sleds here. Now, once again, this is the general tire decision maker sled. I'm sitting here in the yard hooked to the truck. I actually got out and done a little show over the weekend. Mini sled sitting over there. Uh, old sled sitting over there still hooked to the truck from its last show a couple of weeks ago anyway let's get started uh doits doots potato potato however you want to say it this is an air-cooled diesel engine this is a bf 6l 913 engine it's about 175 horsepower uh no radiator no coolant no nothing to deal with there it's pretty tough pretty tough machine they get beat on pretty hard uh as long as these as long as you check the oil in it and the fan belts are running she'll take about anything you throw at it now the engine's actually in here backwards there's the front of the sled this is actually the front of the engine there's the cooling fan and the drive belts for it the engine is actually beside the transmission that's over underneath the middle of the frame rails so in order for everything to turn the right direction for rotation uh, you can see the harmonic balancer there is coupled up to a double roller chain connector that connects to our big drive belt there. That's the engine oil cooler. There's a transmission oil cooler inside the air tunnel there. And the flywheel end of the engine here has a pulley bolted to it. There's our double piston air compressor that is actually a liquid cooled compressor, but is actually cooled by the transmission fluid itself. There's no water liquid to circulate through it, so we use the transmission oil. Down in here, see the air conditioner compressor is belt driven, or air conditioner compressor, belt driven in there. Key to a happy or grumpy sled operator. And back here on the business end of things, this is a 5V, 5 groove drive belt. There's the belt tensioner there, pushes down on the idler pulley. And there's our bell housing of the transmission. I'll get under here so you can see it better. This is an Allison MT653 automatic transmission. Now this particular model has a planetary gear reduction drive in low gear. It is hooked to a shift cable there. You can pull it down in low gear. If you're on a heavy load on a soft track or something, it likes to grunt and growl a little bit to get going. There's our back axle of the tandems. Uh, it's geared to like a 653 or something, 655. Uh, that is a Eaton two-speed differential. It's like a 23,000 pound axle, there's two of them. And all that back axle there in the tandems does is actually drive the sled around forward, backward, drives it around on the ground. Our front axle of the tandems here is another 23,000 pound Eaton two-speed. And all its purpose is is to drive the box. As far as driving the box forward for a pull for competition. Uh, go underneath here a little bit. There you can see the front axle. Two-speed shifter over there. I got a pinion seal starting to leak a little bit. And that drive shaft going up on a pretty steep angle there because the airbags are aired up for going down the road. We'll go up top here, see things a little better. Drive shaft comes up, big pillar block bearing there mounted down on the cross member. Uh, the cover there, that's just a brake relay valve that is used to control the air clutch. Now, this is a Nixon. N-E-X-E-N Series 80 Tooth Clutch and this is just an old nylon strap that's clamped on here keep the dirt out and the dust out down in there are two clutch plates with serrated teeth on them and there's lots of little teeth in there the air lines here that's the air side when it's supplied with air it will push back against the hub end there with the other set of teeth and that's what locks up to engage and disengage the box drive. Uh, it is controlled. You have a control valve in the cab and also up front. There is 
micro switches that when the box gets all the way to the front that will work through electric air solenoids to exhaust the air out of the air chamber to disengage it as quick as possible and it's pretty snappy because if it does not disengage in time and the box gets to the front those big 140h roller chains that run the box it's about a 45,000 pound working tensile strength i believe they will pop out and they're they don't hold that's the that's the weak link that breaks if something has to give because the clutch so to speak some people even call them a connecting device it will not slip with those teeth engaged there's no give whatsoever there's no way the box can travel at a different speed for a different puller fast slow it doesn't matter it's either in or out and next in the box drive line the profab five-speed gearbox that's the same gearbox transmission that a lot of tractors two-wheel drive trucks four-wheel drive trucks different types of vehicles use the five-speed here's a twin counter shaft has an upper and a lower the way it's sitting here right now um one two three four five that's all we have is five box speeds in these sleds and then for this particular sled here uh first being low gear the box will top out somewhere in the 260 foot range then second gear is about 240 there's a small jump from second to third to about 10 foot puts it at about 230 and then third to fourth is about 20 feet puts us at about 210 and then fourth to fifth is another 20 foot jump puts us at about 190 top in the box and that's if the box is all the way back i'll get into some of that later but behind the profab there you see the pulley that's a 3v belt and i'll get underneath and show you what it's connected to that belt is what's the engine and transmission that's how it's connected to the box drive line to run the box back at the end of a pull then there's a little short stubby drive shaft back here into the sqhd rear end but stuff between the rails here that's hooked to the box chains to actually drive it and i'll go back around here and show you some more of that now that sqhd is just basically the housing of an sqhd and as you can tell here she's pretty narrow it's only about i think 30 inches or something between the chains the end plates and all were custom made on all these sleds to fit in here uh that's a three inch solid shaft that this box sprockets are attached to on the pillar blocks there on the end of the rails. And that is one solid shaft all the way through there. There's no carrier, there's no spider gears, there's no nothing in there. The carrier bearings in the housing hold the axle shaft itself in place, but there's just a big hub machine flan uh, flange, I don't necessarily want to call it a hub, machined onto that solid axle through there that the ring gears bolted to and then out this side here that's all still one shaft to our air disc brake that's operated there by a spring brake chamber that's the drive brake for the box and that will hold everything in place as long as the box chains are still in place and hooked to everything um i told you the drive rear end under the sled's like a 655 or something pretty low ratio the front axle there that drives the box is a 370 ratio and then the sqhd back there this particular sled is a 617 ratio and we kind of found that out on this sled more or less by accident uh this sled's gears are about 20 feet faster than some of our other sleds here with decision maker uh, one of them we took the profab and had it sped up a little bit to match this one just for mostly pulling semis and bigger bigger vehicles uh, the older type sleds most of them like i said were about 20 foot slower so their slow gear is about 280 and some of them have different like this is a 20 foot jump and then a 10 foot jump and then two more 20 footers uh, some of them are 10 foot between all of them some of them are 20 foot between all of them so just because the sled you pull this weekend run your class in third gear next weekend another sled might run it in second gear might run it in fourth gear so just going off of what gear it is doesn't necessarily mean from one sled to another 
that it's the same gear. It might be labeled the same on the box, but it's not going to top out necessarily the same place every every time. Um, I'll go around here one more time on the box belt, but all the drive line is from that front axle back. There's no drive shafts or nothing that go to the front of the sled. It's all back here. The box belt, as you can see there, it's that 3V belt that's on that pulley up top. Now it's connected here pretty much on the tail shaft, output shaft of the Allison, because there's that short drive shaft that goes to that back rear end. And all this belt does is purpose is to run the box. There's the air cylinder that activates that tensioner pulley and it's sitting here with pressure on it right now from where I ran the box out to show you all this stuff. Some of the videos and the end cab people ask, I'll flip that little yellow and red uh, PTO valve on the console. People say, what's he doing before he stops? Well, all I'm doing is putting air to that air cylinder to give it a second for the air to put pressure on that pulley so the belt's tight. So as soon as we stop, I can jerk it in gear and it won't slip the belt. Um, that's all the power train, drive train there is to this sled or these types of sleds. Uh, there's two truck batteries. Outside tank here's diesel fuel tanks, about 20 gallon capacity. Inside tanks, hydraulic reservoir. There's our hydraulic filter. And the only other thing as far as brakes and everything, I showed you the drive brake there on the drive rear end the coiled up air line there between the frame rails that rides on its little cable to keep it from getting caught in anything goes up here and attaches to the box itself now on a really bad day if the chains were to break away from the box you would have a box full of lead rolling around in the in the frame rails front to back and it gets a lot of momentum from one to the other one end to the other and you really don't want it whacking the front or the back either one you want it to stay still until everything gets stopped moving if something was to break so in here service brakes just like a semi trailer they're hooked to a custom made piece under there that all it does squeezes down on the tops of the frame rails you can see there where they scratch up on top of the rails but those are for emergency purposes, pretty much. They're all can both brakes, both box brakes are controlled by the same controller there in the cab, one button. But in worst case scenario, how good you can see her there, it is locked down, and that'll hold her still in the rails till you get everything stopped safely. That's all the engine powertrain box drive line stuff there is to one of these things uh see if i can't do another video later on about some other specifics but that's pretty much all there is to these babies uh thanks for watching and we'll do some more videos again in the future